everyone, welcome to Tea Time. Today I have another friend with me, Jess from the Foundation. So this is Jess and she's an occupational therapist that works at our Foundation and also supports Fit Kids Services. So today I thought we would begin by just chatting about what occupational therapy is. Um, Jess will tell you that, as I said, she's supporting the Foundation as well as children in our mainstream centres. But I do get asked a lot, what is occupational therapy and who could it help? So what is it? Well, occupational therapy is something that's actually very, very broad. And I think as mm. we discussed, we sort of support children in a variety, a big variety of different areas mm. across the foundation and across our, our mainstream centres as well. So when we think about occupational therapy, for example, for adults, um, you know, occupation is anything that we do with our time during the day. Mm. So for an adult, we typically spend a lot of time at work. We might think about our driving skills, our cooking skills, and those higher self-care skills that we do in the mornings to prepare for going to work, prepare for outings. But for children, that looks very different. So for children, they spend the majority of their day playing, mm -hmm. which is really how they learn and Absolutely. how they develop. It's so important. So as occupational therapists working in an early intervention setting, we really support those play skills, those engagement skills and everything that goes along with it. So if we think quite broadly about our play skills, we also have to have a think about um, our regulation skills in terms of a sensory perspective. Are we able to sit? Are we able to attend and feel ready and regulated mm -hmm. to learn, to play with others? Are we able to regulate our emotions and cope with little challenges and persist through tasks where we are going to develop our skills mm -hmm. even further. Are we able to wait and take turns with our friends? Are we able to listen and adapt our play to incorporate others mm -hmm. um, within our play activities? All that's so important as we talk about a lot and Ellen and I have talked about and I discuss it so often is the importance of looking at these skills and mm. trying to support children the best way can before they transition to big school, where it becomes more challenging to work on some of those skills if they're yeah. not there and they're not in place. Yeah, it certainly does. And I think um, as occupational therapists, we really learn to look at a skill and really break down all of those different areas so that we can start to build up those foundational skills mm. before we move into our our formal primary school and our formal high schooling and, and beyond into our work as well. And occupational therapy is not just for a child who may have been diagnosed or with um, an additional need mm -hmm. or um, have a serious behaviour issue. And that's what I think the misconception is, you know, if my child needs to see an OT, then we've got a significant problem and, and parents worry and are concerned mm -hmm. that that will continue on or not be or that we can't work on it here and, and it can, you know, some of those goals can be achieved in a short amount of time. So it's like the children that you're working with are brought, have broad skills as well and different needs. Yeah, they certainly do. I think you're exactly right. As you said, some children um, that may need a little bit more support we can work with in a long term, in a long term setting. Mm -hmm. For other children, we only see them for quite a short period of time if there is just one specific area that that child might need a little boost mm -hmm. um, a little bit of help to support some of that skill development we can just work you know across a term or so mm -hmm. um, and really build up that that knowledge and awareness for the children the family yeah. educators and to support that moving forward into one that. of my biggest concerns is always a, a child being lost in the system once they get to big school mm -hmm. and that's my fear for all the children that come through fit kids and so I think it's really important that we address these issues as soon as we can. Yeah. So what are some examples of some of the things that you've had to work on with children from mainstream as well as children at a yeah, foundation? Sure. Um, in terms of mainstream support, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the work that, that we do through the foundation is supporting children's engagement within their preschool, within their early education routines. Mm -hmm. So we have quite a few families that come to us and say, my child loves their outdoor play, they love playing with their friends, but they just can't engage in that group time setting. Yes. They have trouble following the direction of their educators and therefore are mm -hmm. having a bit more difficulty in that tabletop environment mm -hmm. or working on those pre-academic type skills. So, so what are some of the things you would do when working with a child like that? What are some yeah. of the things that you would 
Well, it varies. It varies quite a lot. As an OT, we will sort of take things back to the start and have a look at those early attention skills, right. those regulation skills, and we might might be something as simple as providing the child with a different seating option so mm -hmm. that they can support their posture and feel more comfortable mm -hmm. in that group setting. It might be something simple as providing a visual schedule so the child has very clear expectations around what's coming next, what's coming and, and what the task is so mm -hmm. that they're able to move through those with that extra explanation, that extra support and clarity. And the key is, a, a, as we talk about all the time, every child is so unique that it, the key is, and we're so fortunate to have you come into the centres to really get to know the child and work with the educators because mm -hmm. I know you then give our educators more support and tools that they can use in the classroom day in, day out. Yeah, certainly. Helps. And I think one thing that's really stands out to us as occupational therapists and I think a lot of the educators mm -hmm. as well that we've worked with through Fit Kids um, is that a lot of these strategies we may use to support one child in their setting, often the educators will come back and say, we noticed this child struggling yes. and we use that same strategy and really broadly it supported that whole class yes. to move through that task or that time of the day. So. And I think the other really powerful thing is when we put in place these kind of strategies in an early childhood setting, mm -hmm. it's um, a comfortable environment. It's not really noticeable. The child doesn't feel that they're singled out or that there's something wrong. And again, that is my concern when they get to school. Mm -hmm. When if they do have to have aides come into the classroom or extra work in the classroom, it can be, as they get older, a little bit overwhelming. And yeah. they, why, why am I, you know, why does someone come in for me and not mm -hmm. my friends? And yeah. it can be a bit confusing and upsetting to a child at times. So I think, again, when it's here and it's familiar faces coming into the services, mm -hmm. it's really beneficial. Yeah, that's right. And I think, it, you know, focusing on that really early window up to that yes, six years yeah. of age is when our children are little sponges so they are really adaptable yes, and they take on yes. a lot of that feedback really yeah. nicely. So when should a, ch a, a family reach out if they've got concerns? Yeah I mean again I suppose it's quite individual but mm. I would say if you are you know having some concerns you're not sure where your child is in relation to their peers or mm. in relation to the other children around them the first step would be to have a chat to the educators mm. if they're working with your children every day they've got a great mm. great knowledge base as well to support those queries um, and then we can always take things to the next level from there we can get in touch with the staff at the foundation who can liaise with the educators and if so we can always just come out and have a chat have a phone call and see if um, an assessment or an observation is necessary for that child. And it can be um, another thing that uh, area that I know you look at and we're going to chat about later is school readiness mm -hmm. and for that it can sometimes be a, um, an issue with um, attention to task but also even something as simple as holding a pencil and the concerns that or the challenges that some children have with holding a pencil. I know one of my sons, it, he could hold the pencil right, but he would push so hard yes. that it was exhausting for him to write yeah. his name. So yeah. then he showed no interest in writing as mm -hmm. much as even me trained it as a preschool teacher. He was just not interested in, yeah. in writing because he's, he was, it, I guess the muscles were weak yeah. and he was exhausted, yeah. you know, so it can be some of the help that you, I know you've given children can mm. be as simple as things like that, yeah, which certainly. a child would need for only a short amount of time. Yeah, that, that's right. We can certainly work on you know those quite specific skills if it is mm. just that one area that mm. we can do a bit of hand strengthening and work around our grasp and really develop that interest again for those fine motor yes. activities. Yeah. Well, I think the Fit Kids, it's all the centres are so grateful to have the, all of you from the foundation supporting our children in every way so that we can have that early intervention and give children every chance to reach their full potential, whatever that may be. I talk about it a lot where it's every child is unique and so we need to you know, work for each individual child mm. and assist them to reach their potential. Yeah, so thanks for joining me today. Yeah, no problem. And if you have any concerns, please speak to your educators and we have this wealth of knowledge, experience and support, which is um, great. So please reach out and um, Get in as early as possible if you feel that your child needs a little extra support before transitioning to school.